Good evening, those of us who are joining us, we're just going to give a few minutes for everybody to join the Zoom tonight. Good evening, those of you who are joining us. We're just waiting a few more seconds as everybody comes into the Zoom. Our numbers are still going up. So I know there are still more people joining us. We'll wait a few more seconds. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. Uh, welcome this evening to the class of 2026, all of our families and our families of our Discovery Summer Program. Uh, my name is Dina Ingram and I'm the Director of Family Engagement here at Stuyvesant. We are so happy to have the chance for you to hear from our parents, some of our administration and our students, um, our big sub chairs who are here this night and they're leading our mentor program for your incoming students. Uh, first off, I want to point to our chat. I'm going to put in there um, the translation line in Mandarin. If you're not already tuned into that line, um, then please see the note uh, in the chat. And I'm going to pause for a second so our parent coordinator, Ms. Natalie Tang, can translate that information. Natalie, are you on mute? Could you just let them know that in Chinese? Yes, Dina, um, I'm sorry. What is the uh, number that they should be dialing in? I'm going to put that in the chat. So give me okay. two seconds. So all the information should be right there. Okay. Uh, 你好. 谢谢今天你们参加我们这个活动那如果你需要国语的翻译的话请拨打那个会议的ID是833554314 是KY35S8。好,谢谢你们参加。Thank you, Natalie. So tonight we're going to answer many of the most frequently asked questions uh, that we've gotten in advance. And also for those who have not sent question in advance, uh, you can use the Q&A function on your Zoom to type questions. And we're going to do our best to get to as many as possible. And to start off our evening, I'd like to introduce our principal, Dr. Sing Yu. Thanks, Ms. Ingram, and welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the class of 2026. We are tremendously excited 
uh, to be welcoming you again. Uh, this is a really exciting time. Uh, we're closing in on the end of the school year and summer is about to begin. So big congratulations on finishing uh, middle school or close to finishing middle school. Again, that's a big milestone and, and clearly you have another one upon you, which would be entering high school. Uh, tonight, we're really delighted to welcome all of you. I know there are gonna be tons of questions uh, and hopefully that excitement will continue to be excitement rather than anxiety um, because you are uh, finishing your eighth grade and you're entering the summer. And we want you to have a, an amazing time. So tonight, uh, you have an opportunity to hear from a variety of our of our parent leaders, our student leaders, and our staff leaders uh, to answer some of the questions that you, you may have. Um, something I really want to stress is maintain the excitement. Um, you've had some touch points with us. You've gotten to see the building. You've gotten to tour uh, the building, see the different classrooms, meet a many, many of our staff, see the amazing kids we have and our families. Um, where do you get, when you come, come to the building, you get a standing ovation and tons of cheering and, and welcoming you in. Uh, you have a fan base here and we're so excited to have you. Tonight, you're gonna have some questions answered. Uh, and again, we have such a, a, an amazing uh, panel of, of parents, students and staff who are gonna, again, answer the questions that you may have. But please know, there are probably gonna be tons of questions that we're not gonna be able to answer, but it's okay, you're gonna have time. You're gonna have the whole summer. We're gonna to continue to send information uh, throughout the summer and then uh, particularly as we get closer into the school year. Um, but just know this is four years. This is not one year, so four year journey. Uh, and many of our parents here uh, tonight that are gonna to be part of our panelists have been doing this for a while uh, because they've had multiple kids at Stuyvesant. So again, they will speak about the journey itself. Um, and you know, when the when you talk to the kids and, and ask those questions, you're gonna hear the excitement. You're gonna hear um, being surrounded by like-minded students uh, who are both high-performing, uh, hardworking, and just dedicated to being uh, great at everything. Uh, and I say that because they haven't limited themselves. And you see that in all our kids, whether it's inside the classroom or outside. Uh, they're extraordinary in so many different ways. Uh, and that's what we expect when you come to Stuyvesant, that you're gonna be pushed to excel uh, and pushed in a good way because you're surrounded by so many cheerleaders, uh, both inside and outside the classroom, with our parents and our families and across and with your peers. So tonight, try to enjoy it. Ask tons of questions. We're gonna to get to as many as we can, um, but just know this is a four year journey and you're gonna have tons and tons of people who are going to be here along the way to help you. Um, we got an incredible parents association. Uh, they've done amazing work. I am so thankful for the last two years uh, that I've been here. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to get through these last two years without them. Uh, they're active, they're excited, and, and most importantly, they're just kind. Uh, and they're going to welcome all the parents, incoming parents, uh, to join the parent association. And please do, because we do have an active parent association. And students, again, same thing. Um, when you come to Stuyvesant, it's a big, a big place, um, but every day you're going to make it smaller and smaller. And when you get to know the upperclassmen, please know they're here. They're going to mentor you. They're going to show you the way. Uh, and mostly, same thing I said about the parents. They're also very, very kind. Uh, they say good morning to me every morning uh, when I get to see them. And, and again, uh, we have such an amazing uh, community. Our staff are here and everyone is tremendously excited to welcome you. Uh, to Stuyvesant High School. So let's have a great evening tonight. Stay excited and congratulations on finishing your eighth grade year. Thank you, Principal Yu. So uh, you're seeing many faces. Uh, we definitely want to introduce you to all of them this evening. We're uh, very happy to have some of our seasoned parents uh, from Stuyvesant with us to answer questions. Uh, both of our co-presidents who are senior par uh, parents are with us, um, Ms. Connie Sue and Mr. Alex Shaffron. We also have Mr. Thomas Yu with us and Ms. Chandra Metzler, who is a parent um, that is joining us this evening. Of course, um, I introduced briefly before our parent coordinator, Ms. Natalie Tang. And also we have our big SIB chairs, the chair of our mentoring program. Um, we have four out of five of them with us tonight. And I would like for them to tell you a little bit about the Big Civ program. So uh, Sabiha and Suki, Ava and Effie are with us tonight and going to tell you a little bit about the program. Floor is yours, Big Sibs. 
I mean, hi everyone, I can start off. Um, as Ms. Ingram said, my name is Suki, or as it says here, Sukenya Ferguson, but your incoming freshmen know me as Suki. Um, I am one out of the five big sip chairs. And yeah, I'm so excited to work with uh, your um, incoming freshmen. We already met a lot of them. They're absolutely amazing. And I'll just pass it on to my co-chair, Ava. Hi, so thank you, Suki, for that lovely introduction. I am another one of the five Big Sip Chairs. Uh, like Suki already mentioned, my name is Ava, and we're all rising seniors to give you a little bit of uh, context, but I'll just pass it on to Efe. Uh, hello, I am Efe. You guys might notice a little pattern here, but I am also a Big Sip Chair. And um, I am a junior, and I did transition here really smoothly, thanks to Miss Ingram and the staff here. And I will pass it off to Sabiha. Hi hey everyone, my name is Sabiha. I'm also surprised a rising senior and a big sub chair. We have one more big sub chair who wasn't able to be here with us. Her name's Alicia, she's amazing as well. Um, so what is the big sub program? So the big sib literally represents big sibling in the sense that there are upperclassmen here who are appointed to little sibs who are the incoming freshmen here. Um, and they basically are a direct resource for them to reach out for any particular reason. Because coming into STI, there are many obstacles you might face. It might be a little bit difficult to adapt into the environment, especially during the first semester. So these upperclassmen always stand as a resource to help out with academic purposes. If you're having difficulty having friends, especially because you're coming from a, it's a totally different environment, totally different school, or um, just general like extracurricular help, any assistance that you need, you can reach out to your big sibs. So each homeroom has about five big sibs, but you can reach out to any one part of the program. And they are all kind, all willing to help out and are experienced in such a case because we've gone through STI for three years. So we, I would say we're kind of a little bit experienced in it. Um, so we always stand as a resource and we can always guide you to other resources such as administration um, and academic resources for your child to succeed here at STI. So that's a little deep brief on what the VIXIT program is. And just to add on one more uh, quick reminder, we are a mentorship program, but first and foremost, we sort of view these big sib, little sib relationships as friendships. Um, and through your years here at STI, you will form close bonds with your co-little sibs in your homeroom. There are about 35 in each homeroom, so you will make fast friends once you have homeroom time. Uh, and you will form close relationships with your five to six big sibs in your homeroom. I know for a fact that I still speak to mine, even though they've graduated and they're in college and they're heading on with their lives. So uh, if that worries you in any way, don't be scared. Your freshmen will make friends quick and easy. Right. So just wrapping up what my co-chairs have said, um, Stuyvesant does may have this intimidating reputation of a big school, but what many people don't realize is that we have an even bigger community and the Big Sip program just stands as a symbol of that community and how everybody is basically in the school to help one another out and just make sure everybody has the resources that they need. And that's just what we're here to facilitate. Yep, and finally, um, adding on to all of my co-chairs, one very important thing about the Big Sib program is that all of our Big Sibs are extremely like qualified for any other extracurricular that um, STI holds. So if you have, if your children have any questions regarding specific extracurriculars, some of the best people to go to are their Big Sibs. We have an amazing pool of Big Sibs. Even our chairs are so like into the Stuyvesant community. So definitely we have this, this program is one of the biggest resources that we give to the incoming freshmen. And we really hope that you and your um, incoming freshmen use it really well. Thank you so much, Big Sibs. Uh, we know that you have tons of questions. Uh, you've already got it, gotten started in the Q&A and uh, we have a lot that we have submitted already in advance. Um, Ms. Pedrick, our assistant principal of the counseling department will be joining us shortly and she'll also be answering questions. So we'll introduce her when she gets here and, uh, and let her speak to a little bit about what she does here at STI. Um, our co-president, Mr. Schaffern, is going to join me in managing the asking of questions this evening. But um, we're going to be going around a little bit. There are some questions that you've asked that are questions we would pose to our parents primarily, others that we would pose to administration. So, And we always want to get the student input 
on um, the perspective of Stuyvesant because they're the ones that are there every day, day in and day out um, in the classrooms. So uh, I'll be leaning heavily on Mr. Yu, uh, Principal Yu, until Ms. Pedrick <laughs> arrives <laughs> for the um, admin questions. But to just get us started, I actually am going to present a question to our um, PA co-presidents because we know that um, they are advertising to our incoming uh, students and families about the busing program that is going on um, to Stuyvesant because we did have a question about um, offering any school buses. So maybe the two of you can speak a little bit to that. Um, so, um, Connie, may, yeah. maybe, maybe you'll take Yeah, we'll sure, take sure. Thank I'll, you. I'll um, speak to this one. So uh, first of all, I just wanted to make it clear that um, yes, last year, well, this year, this school year, we, uh, some parents or some students uh, did take school bus from um, Queens to Stetson High School, uh, but also wanted to make it clear that the school bus is not, we are not affiliated with uh, the school bus company uh, in any shape or form. So I believe uh, this is what I have heard. The school bus company uh, does plan to continue offering the busing service um, to our Stuyvesant students who live in Queens, who want to travel from Queens to Stuyvesant High School. So if you have any questions, we encourage you to contact the school bus company directly and um, they can answer your questions. And I am going to, uh, I just sent a text to chat, so you will find the uh, bus company information and also the email, well, the, the phone number and the email address in the chat. So feel free to give them a call if you're interested. Thank you, Connie. Um, anything to add, Alex? Uh, no, no, okay. nothing, nothing for okay. that one. Uh, I will, I, I will add from the school standpoint that I will repeat what. Um, Connie had mentioned that the school is also not affiliated with the bus company, that they are a privately held company. So the families that opt into the private bus company, they contract with that bus company. So it does, it's not um, from Stuyvesant High School or the parent association, but it is out there. And I know that many of you have asked about it. Um, I am gonna skip a little, Alex, sorry to confuse you sure. on the list of questions, uh, um, no, just fine. to, but I know that you can keep up. Um, so uh, maybe Principal, you um, can help us start us out because I know that everybody will wanna chime in on the question of what is the best way to communicate with teachers regarding uh, your student? Yeah, so that's a great question. And one that we really wanna to, want to make sure we continue to do um, and v using utilizing uh, various mediums. So whether it's uh, using the telephone, uh, doing Zoom, uh, doing email, we're gonna continue to encourage having that communication. We do have parent-teacher conferences uh, that happen four times uh, or twice a year uh, over the course of four days, but it's important that we're constantly communicating throughout the year. Um, those are dedicated times, but you know, the one thing that we really want to encourage is that uh, our teachers are going to reach out to you and the expectation that you'll reach out to them. Uh, we want to make sure that we're developing that relationship uh, throughout the entire year and not just during the various marking periods or at the end of the term. Um, oftentimes those are a little bit too late. So we really want to make sure we start at the very beginning, uh, get to know our teachers, our teachers getting to know you and, and, and clearly your child. But that communication, we want to start early and particularly since you're starting in your freshman year, start building that muscle um, in, in, in staying in close contact. Additionally, we utilize a variety of systems. Um, you'll learn more about Talos. Uh, we are currently making a decision about our grading platform, um, but there will be a number of different uh, vehicles in terms of finding ways to communicate. So again, uh, we will continue to update you on the best ways, but so far, you know, most of our communication has been via email, uh, via phone, and of course, Zoom um, as a way to communicate with families. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to jump in and actually I'm going to ask maybe a parent for the same kind of questions. What did you, uh, Chandra, let's, uh, let's go with you. Who were the people that you found most helpful in kind of, um, giving advice on the scheduling for your student or um, just getting general school advice? So first of all, I'll say that 
um, I have found the communication from the administration at Stuyvesant to be absolutely terrific, unbelievably detailed. Um, and you're not only getting information every week from Dina as administrators, but also the Parents Association has their own distribution, um, as well as Mr. Blum, who you all get to know, who helps coordinate um, summer activities. I mean, it really, you there's no lack of communication from the school, which has been really terrific. I do want to go back and touch upon the communication with the teachers, because that I think is also really neat and very special. Um, as you can imagine, a school of this size, uh, that's a lot of coordination and the school has managed to program this incredible system that where you can sign up and prioritize which teachers you wanna to talk to. And I have never had an issue um, getting a parent teacher conference with one of my son's teachers and the teachers have also very kindly made it very clear, like the communication with them is not limited to parent teacher conferences. Um, and they have welcomed, you know, interim communication. There is a system that we've been using. I, I understand we'll probably move away from that system over the summer, but it does allow for you to email your teachers, your son, your child's teachers um, over time. So I think, um, I, you know, on all those fronts, it's been really um, impressive. And, you know, just as background, I have a child at another New York City Public High School. Um, those two children, my two children went to two different middle schools. So I've seen a variety of systems and a variety of means of communication. And I'm, I'm really you know, blown away with what's offered at STI. Thank you. Dina, back to you. Yes, I was going to actually pass it to the parents to ask to share their experiences. So thank you, Chandra, for that. And then also um, really from the student uh, viewpoint, uh, for our big sibs, um, what is the best way that you found to communicate with your teachers? You're in their classroom from day to day, but um, otherwise, if you're switching from 10 classes a day, what are, the, what are your methods to give tips to our students? Yeah, so I can jump in <laughs> before FA, but for me personally, I have always used email as a uh, form of getting quick communication between my teachers. They always respond to their emails. Most of the teachers here at STI are very vigilant about that. They're always online. They're open to answering any questions about the class, about coursework, anything you have in mind, as well as office hours and AIS tutoring that we have. If you have any specific questions uh, later during the day, in the afternoon, you can stop your teacher and ask them whatever questions you need to ask them. And once a week, I mentioned briefly um, AIS tutoring, it's just for specific subjects that there will be one teacher designated there. They, met, they might not be the teacher you have, say you have one, you have teacher A in physics, but then you have teacher B teaching you AIS tutoring. Uh, that doesn't matter because your tutors and your teachers at AIS will still be able to answer any questions you have about the course. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's definitely email and stopping them <laughs> at their office or stopping them after class before they move on to their next class. Um, right. Adding on to Ava, teachers understand that students will have a lot of questions outside of the classroom. And um, so to that extent, in the beginning of the year, it's really important to pay attention for when each teacher announces their free periods or what times are available or their email. At the beginning of the year, normally each teacher will like provide that information like, hey, I'm free periods two, three and 10 if anybody needs to see me. So it is really important that your student jots down that information just to save it for a later time. Thank you, F.A. Now, I know that um, if you don't know already, if you haven't seen the STI calendar, or I know class of 2026 and the families got their first weekly update this morning, um, but Camp STI part two is on August 31st for our students and for our parents, you also have a Camp STI on September 1. So we'll be following up with more information, but I know there's been a number of questions as when is Camp STI? So we finally have the confirmed dates as August 31st for our students and uh, September 1 for our parents. Um, our next question though goes to mainly our students and our parents. So signing up for sports teams and tryouts in the fall, um, maybe you can talk, talk to how that works. Um, do you still ha have to end, you can answer the, question, the big question, do you have to still participate in gym class or PE if you're on a sports team? So first um, speak to how we get on a sports team and then how is that counted? Who wants to start? Do we hear from a student or a parent first? You could start. 
but go um, right ahead. So, so the first part of whether or not you still have to participate in PE. Yes, you do. PE is still a course you have to take at STI. Um, but I do recommend it's a very great class. There's so many options that you can take for PE and it's a great de-stressor throughout the day. But um, sports and PE is completely separate. However, you do have the possibility of, let's say you have a 10th free, you can take that off and participate in sports during that period, which kind of eases up on the amount of time it takes um, sports teams. Now, getting on to sports teams. So there are different tryout seasons for different sports, right? So we have our fall sports, our winter sports, and our spring sports. Um, so fall sports, a lot of the tryout dates start in August. Um, I do recommend to join Facebook in which we have a Dear Incoming Chat in which a lot of the student groups post tryouts for their specific sports, but there are also various other platforms in which they'll post. Um, and you'll definitely see posters up at school about talking about it. So you just have to stay on the lookout about all this information. It will always be at ease. You just kind of have to seek it out a little bit. Um, but there are three different seasons, a bunch of sports to join, and I highly recommend joining. As you're talking about it, uh, one question that there is out there is that can you try out for multiple sports, sport teams? And how competitive are some of the sport teams are? Do you mind uh, addressing that? Yeah, I could talk about that. So yes, mm -hmm. you could try out for multiple sports teams, but the little outlier is that um, many sports like basketball, football, and baseball, each of those are reserved in their own seasons. Like Sabia said, there's the winter season, the fall season, and the spring se season. So of course you don't want to burn out. So it's normally recommended that you try out for one sport per season if you're going for th triple sports. But the thing is, these sports teams are a fair commitment. Like you're expected to show up, you're expected to go to practices, you're expected to give up some time. So it's important that the amount of time and energy that's going to be given up to these sports teams is acknowledged. But the the payoff is great. So yeah, you could do multiple sports teams, but it's just a matter of timing and balancing your schedule. Thank you, Epe. Um, I'm going to jump to a question that is uh, on everybody's minds. Um, maybe, Principal, you can help, and then we can hear some tips from the students and uh, the parents here. So uh, my incoming ninth grader is concerned about homework load and staying up late to complete it. And then, of course, with the commute, many of them travel uh, to get to school by 8 a.m. And how are we addressing the issues of homework load and time management? So really great question. And I think the, uh, you know, our students should definitely chime in. You know, I think this is the, the last two years have really um, brought to light again, uh, time management and the overall student experience. And, and I think you've already heard, um, you know, not only do we have a challenging uh, academic experience that we want young people to to really explore, uh, but a lot of great things happen also outside the classroom, and and many of that happens right after school, whether it's through extracurricular activities or through uh, athletics, uh, and those are you know important memories and important experience for our young people. So one of the things that we did um, this past year was to to examine the homework policy. Uh, in the past, we had a one year. Uh, sorry, a one hour uh, homework limit for AP classes and um, 30 minutes for non-AP. Uh, this year, we decided to go with 30 minutes for across the board. Um, and again, I think, uh, you know, this is something that we're continuing to evaluate for a number of reasons. Uh, one is we want young people to be able to think about the overall experience, um, to, to perform well academically, but to also um, participate in the activities outside of the classroom and finding that appropriate balance that are going to allow them to be productive uh, students, but also just productive people. Uh, additionally, you know, I think the, 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 the piece that we're also having to work on with our young people is time management. Um, we do know many of our students are commuting from all five boroughs. Um, and, and again, that's a commitment as well to come every day, both uh, early to school as well as staying late and then finding the time to be able to do the, to do their homework and keep up with class. Um, so, Changing, you know, the policy to 30 minutes, I think, has been has been a good thing. Uh, clearly, there's more work in terms of making sure that we're, con con, you know, consistently communicating with our classes, asking, engaging how the workload, um, how much, you know, is 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 too much or not enough. And again, I think, you know, one of the things that's been really encouraging is not only with our PA, but also with our student union. And we do a lot of surveys to try to gauge um, how things are going. 
Uh, I, you know, I will, I'll be at the forefront and say this, you know, again, I think we need to do a better job of that and really trying to gauge how our young people are handling, um, you know, the workload, particularly as we're still coming out of a pandemic. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we've seen and we've experienced over the course of the two years. Um, we are fortunate that, we're, you know, we're in person and we've been able to get back to some of the pre-COVID activities. Um, but we do know that we need to continue to to evaluate, continue to communicate with our students and their families uh, to see if there are other things that we can be doing to encourage a balanced um, balanced array of both academics and extracurricular activities. And how about our students and um, and even our parents that are with us tonight? Can you share some tips that you've um, you know benefited from? in uh, managing homework and time. Uh, Suki, I know you have your hand up. You wanna start us off? Yeah, of course. Um, definitely, it took me a while to like get used to Stuyvesant's workload. Like when I was in middle school, I didn't have to do anything. Like I didn't have to study. I didn't have to do any type of homework. I just, you know, knew everything. And this school is full of geniuses, but that's not the same when we're entering high school. So it took me a while to realize this, but one of the biggest um, resources I use would be my free periods. I definitely am the, I'm the type of person that can't do work at home. And I feel way better in the school environment, utilizing spaces like the library near my locker. Um, we have designated spots for designated grades. Um, and also just like talking to teachers, they have office hours a lot of the time and we could just go to them, ask our questions, even do our work there. Um, it is very, very just helpful for me to be in the school environment while I'm doing my work. And we can stay in the school until five o'clock. If I don't really have anything to do that day, I would stay after school, get some work done and then head home. So yeah. Fantastic. Um, so I just wanna jump in because uh, Ms. Pedrick has joined us this evening and she is our assistant principal of the school counseling department. And I know she's gonna have a lot to add to this uh, subject. So I'm gonna jump right in there, <laughs> Ms. Pedrick. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ingram. So for this particular topic, I'd love to share with our incoming families that we do have freshman seminars, um, that we have school counselors who push into your child's biology class every other week. And the beginning of the semester, the beginning uh, fall semester, we are concentrating on the tips and tools that will help your child to adjust to this new environment, not only high school, but yes, Stuyvesant in high school. So we do seminars on time management, specifically organizing your space at home, study skills, uh, overall organization, um, connections in the school, which has to do not only with um, friendship connections, but also helping to connect with your teacher, connect with all the various free resources that we offer at Stuyvesant, such as our writing center and our after school uh, tutoring from our teachers to our one-on-one -on -one tutoring with um, Arista. And then in the spring semester, we get into some kind of deeper things, but that first semester is primarily um, to give your child the tools to be able to help them to manage these items, which will then help them to manage their stress. It's sort of a sneaky way to help them with their stress management. Thank you, Ms. Pedrick. And Ava, you wanted to jump in as well. Yes, thank you. I would just make a final comment. I know a bunch of parents in the Q&A are worried about commute. So to touch upon that and your workload, your commute is ideal for getting a ton of work done, especially if you live like an hour away, like most students do from Stuyvesant. So I definitely uh, take my e-train time to do a ton of work for my classes, in addition to the free periods that Suki already mentioned. And another tip that goes beyond just free periods and commute is really making sure that you put your phone, your laptop in another room if you don't need to use it at that moment. Because I know we get distracted with notifications from Facebook or other applications. Um, and it's still an issue that most students I believe are dealing with, myself included. So what I do when I go home is I put my phone to charge in the other room and I go straight up to my room and I do whatever homework I need to do. And then I allow myself to indulge in a few minutes of phone time. Doesn't always go according to plan, but it does help me with my time management. Oh, I'm muted. Uh, thank you, Ava. I know, uh, uh, Connie, I think you had an additional comment you wanted to make. 
Well, I, I guess just from a parent's perspective, I would like to suggest that like parents, if you notice your child is spending way too much time or staying up way too late, um, just doing the homework, um, you probably want to talk to them about this. You know, it could be because, yes, there's just too much, or maybe because the child's having some challenges dealing with that particular subject, or it might be because the child um, is still trying to adjust or spending time on social media, chatting with friends. <laughs> that I I know for a fact that that does exist, like among some of the students. So uh, you might want to, you know, just to make sure that, you know, the child is utilizing the time efficiently. And and also, by the way, uh, I do agree with what Ava and Suki said about, you know, how to uh, make a use of time, whether, you know, they're in the school or on the commute. My son did the same thing as well. Thank you. Thank you. And while we're on this topic, um, and Ms. Pedrick has joined us, I, many parents are wondering about uh, how the school supports social emotional uh, health of our students. So maybe you can give us a brief overview of our school counseling department. Wonderful, thank you. So something I'm very proud about at Stuyvesant is um, our low student to counselor ratio. So the national uh, average is about 474 to one, and we're closer to 274 to one. So when your child enters Stuyvesant High School, they're gonna be placed into a homeroom. That homeroom is associated with a school counselor. We have 12 school counselors who take care of two homerooms per grade level. You're going to stay with that school counselor for all four years and then the great thing is come spring semester february of your junior year you're actually going to add a counselor so your school counselor who's with you all four years will take care of the social emotional and academic aspects of your child's high school career and then the college counselor will come in and be able to help navigate through the uh, college admissions process the tours all the questions financially the actual applications etc so when you count that in, it's actually a lower uh, counselor to school student ratio. Then in addition, um, at present, we have two uh, social workers who work with our students who are available for um, casual uh, drop-ins or are able to make appointments and have more um, formal check-ins with one another. And then we also have had, for all the years I've been at Stuyvesant, which is over 10 years now, a relationship with uh, an organization called the Jewish Board, and they provide an in-house uh, licensed clinical social worker to our school. So essentially, you can kind of think of it as being a therapist whose office is located within Stuyvesant. So it goes through insurance. Your child is able to say, okay, every Wednesday um, at 325, I know that I have my appointment with my Jewish Board therapist. And no, you do not have to be Jewish to see this therapist. It's simply the name of their community-based organization. So uh, that's a little overview, I think, of our, our setup and how we're structured at Stuyvesant for our mental health of our students. Thank you, Ms. Pedrick. Just a quick add on, um, specifically for struggling students, uh, what would be the best route? So in the beginning, we do some outreach to our students. We have either the counselors uh, either do little small groups of the freshmen or might come together uh, as a full home room. This is kind of pre-COVID times we're thinking where they might be, we'll have some candy to hand out or sometimes uh, even some pizza parties, but that feels like so many years ago. So hopefully we get that started again this fall uh, where our students are able to come together. So right from the beginning, from camp style on, they're getting to know who their school counselor is, where they're located, um, how to connect with them, and uh, they can drop in the office anytime. Our counselors are great with email as well. Further, we do have a buddy system. So if for any reason your child stops in the counseling suite to visit with their assigned counselor, but that counselor is perhaps in a meeting or with another student at that moment, we do have a buddy system so that they have someone to speak to no matter um, the availability of their counselor in that one moment. So please always encourage your child to come and connect. And then you also are able to reach out too. So if you want to be able to contact that school counselor and say, you know what, I'm, I'm seeing some changes in my, my child. And, you know, if you are able to help out in this way or do a little check-in, it could help. Those things are always welcomed by the school counselor. Thank you. And I think Mr. Yu, you also had something to add. Right. I just want to quickly add that, um, this is uh, Stuyvesant. It is heavy load, um, so people need to get used to it. And I think one of the key is to 
start curving your activities in gaming and social media time, uh, those need to get reduced. Uh, it would, if you don't reduce it, you will pay for it in terms of lack of sleep or other stressful conditions. So uh, maybe use the summer to start, you know, uh, changing the habits a little bit. So I'd love to just say uh, everybody has to sort of step up their game. <laughs> Great advice. Um, I'm going to jump with the question about the homerooms. So um, I guess maybe, Casey, if you don't mind talking about what principle or what criteria is used to group the ninth graders into homerooms together, and then a bit of a question for you and maybe to Big Sibs and are there any activities, like what are the activities that folks, students in the same homeroom do together, if any? Well, right from the start, you're not only connected with your school counselor through your homeroom assignment, but you're also connected to our awesome big sibs. So our big sibs are assigned. So let's say you're in, um, my last name starts with P. So if you're in a homeroom P, you would have Mr. Fiola as your school counselor, and you would have five or six big sibs who are dedicated to homeroom P. And they're going to make sure that they're helping you acclimate to uh, understand where the school is and frequently asked questions. They're going to make sure that you're starting to um, get that web of socialization going to be able to have those people who you can rely on and get information from if you're absent, et cetera, et cetera. So that's right from the beginning. And then the homerooms do meet periodically throughout the year for sometimes administrative needs, but other times we do things um, for bonding purposes or we get to do both at the same time, hopefully. Um, so, and then the homeroom again is associated come junior year with your college counselor. So we have tried, maybe Mr. Shaffron is alluding to this, we have tried some different variations on grouping some students together um, based on various things or things that are uh, uh, present for us in the moment, maybe switching some things up based on coming back from COVID, but that was not how it was done this year, this current come September. Thank you. Um, maybe jumping into another completely different question. So question, the typical day of a STI student, easy, busy, uh, you know, in the middle, Maybe I'm gonna, Suki, maybe you, you can jump in as the, try to uh, summarize what it is. And then we can ask maybe a parent, uh, maybe Connie, you can talk about kind of how it looks to you. Okay, so, well, I have an extracurricular probably every day. So just like saying from that, I will stay after school majority of my time. So I have um, a first period class, so I would get to school around um, eight o'clock. Um, I don't have that long of a commute, so I don't have to wake up that early, but I do get to school around eight o'clock. Um, I have, you know, my seven classes, my seven academic periods, as well as my lunch, also about like a free period. And then also um, at the end of the day, I would either have practice for my dance team or I would have a meeting or I'd have to meet with Ms. Pedrick for big sibs. Um, also meet with my co-chairs. It'd be something different probably every day, but for the average star student, they definitely have something after school. Um, and I think just segueing into this one major thing would be with parents giving these students the leeway to stay after school and do these extracurriculars. Um, it, it's what makes the Stuyvesant experience so enjoyable. If you're just at school and at home and at school and at home, you're going to suffer. You're not going to be able to make new friends, understand the Stuy community, be able to like open your network and also just like build up that list. If you are a parent that's thinking about college, definitely building up that list of extracurriculars. Don't stress too much, but definitely freshman year is the perfect time to dip your toes into every single pool. And then you can dwindle it down as you go throughout your years. Um, right now as a junior, I'm probably doing way too much for my own good. So I'm not the best example, but um, definitely the same thing as my other co-chairs. We do have a lot when it comes to extracurriculars, but we have somehow managed it well. So yeah, 
um, it definitely comes with time and effort and just overall communication with your parents and also with like other students that you're working with. Sounds good. And I think you, you want to add a little bit? Um, yeah, just really quickly. Something that I've picked up on recently is that um, Stuyvesant does kind of have like this perfect storm thing going on where the tests are scheduled like so meticulously where there could be a week where you have five tests and there could be a week where you have absolutely nothing. And it's really important to not let all that free time get into your head because when you have all that free time followed by all that work, it really kind of messes up your interior clock, your interior schedule, and it could really throw you off balance. So what's important to realize is that every day you're gonna have work to do. Just try not to procrastinate because procrastinating in Stuyvesant is really killer. Thank you. Thank you. Great advice. Connie, um, from the parent perspective. I can't agree more with what the two students just said uh, about the ex extracurricular activities be being engaged and about uh, that procrastination, don't procrastinate. <laughs> so uh, my son, he, well, we live in Queens. So his day typically starts um, around 6.15, 6.20. Um, to catch the train at around 6, 650 uh, so that, you know, he can get to school before the, the first period. And he usually will have one period during the day. So like I mentioned before, he will try to make use of his time to do his homework whenever he could. Um, he has extracurricular after school. So he usually doesn't uh, leave the school until, you um, five so so by the time he gets home it's already 6 30 or even after seven o'clock um he does his homework after dinner and he usually would go to sleep by 11 o'clock so that's his typical day and um because he did a lot of um performance like the direct that he was directing the different performances so during the performance season it could get really bad <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes he didn't get home until like eight o'clock or even later. Um, so if that happens, then he probably would have to stay up till after midnight. Um, so that's his, that's his heavy, like very busy day. Clearly learning a lot of new things because um, yeah, the, our experience was uh, uh, midnight is an early night <laughs> in our house. <laughs> So, yeah. I, you know, I see a lot of nodding, but again, it's um, it's really up to whatever your habits are and how you kind of build your build your work. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Connie. I'm going to skip to a few logistical questions that have come up. So I know that um, students and families are anxious to know when will you get your schedule for fall? And so we try to have those uh, ready just before school begins. Um, if our program office is able to have a preview ready for Camp Sty Part 2, then we'll offer you uh, a little bit of insight there. But if not, you'll definitely get an email um, with that program shortly before the school year begins, um, right before Labor Day. Uh, also, um, Camp Sty Part 2, a lot of people are asking, uh, is it the same as Camp Sty Part 1? It is not, it is a different program. Those of you who were able to join us for uh, Camp Sty Part One know that there were placement tests and ID photos and swim tests. Uh, there was some bonding time. While there is some bonding time with our big sibs and meeting with our counselors and more parent Q&A sessions, there's also an information session, uh, an orientation and uh, in the theater for families and um, a lot goes on at Camp Sty part two that does not happen at part one. With that said, we know that um, it takes place while during the time where many people are still on vacation. So some people are nervous about missing it, but don't panic because um, between Ms. Pedrick and I and other and the school counselors, we're gonna, and the big sibs, we're gonna make sure that that first week of school that your student gets all the information that they need. You will have a digital folder with all of the forms that we talk about. Um, so you, it's not anything that we're expecting anybody to cancel vacation plans for. Right, no, I see Ms. Pedrick as, nodding <laughs> right along with us. So Dina, please, as you, oh, go sorry, ahead, sorry, Alex. Sorry, sorry. I was just no, gonna no. say everybody should enjoy their vacation and not cancel. 
<laughs> it definitely should. Um, a couple of additional questions re regarding the logistics. Uh, one is when will the um, placement test results be available to families for those who have taken them uh, in, in June? And then another follow up question, uh, a little bit more information about the discovery program. But let, let's maybe let's get the first one. I answered. Ms. Patrick, do you want to take the uh, discovery question and I'll take the first one? Um, so placement results um, are not, the scores will not be shared uh, with families traditionally, but uh, they will be reflected in the placements that you receive uh, on your schedule. So um, everyone is placed in a, the proper math course uh, according to that with their wrote down in their forms that they wanted to be placed in math team, then they will uh, there's the second part of the um, math placement test that they'll look at. Mr. Smith is also communicating with every family of a student who did not take the placement exam so that they can use transcripts for placement. So uh, while you will not see the score, uh, it will be reflected in the placements. And then also our teachers are evaluating students in the first week of class um, if per se there is a placement that isn't the appropriate one whether forward or back. Great, great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Perry, may, maybe just more, more specifically, um, I guess for the discovery program, any logistical details and will the students who are taking classes, will they have a final exam? Is it conditional on them finishing the homework? Just basically how does it work? Um, many have this question. Okay. Thank you. So in a bit of a nutshell, what we're trying to do during the summer discovery is to give you, your child, an opportunity to try out the Stuyvesant work, the level of work, um, what will be asked of them. The English class, for example, gives a really great sense of what it will be like to read during the homework session and then be able to contribute to class discussions and further along um, during the actual class itself to be get feedback on their writing, etc. So we're really looking to be able to give your child a sense of what it would like to be a Stuyvesant student. And we're also looking to make sure that uh, we're setting them up for success. So um, all of that is going to be taken into consideration in a very holistic sense from the summer discovery staff. Uh, so no, there is not just one test um, in order to gain admission to Stuyvesant through the end of the summer discovery program. And can I just add on, uh, that was a really great synopsis of what we're gonna be looking for. Uh, it will be the body of work over the course of the summer. Uh, not only will it give us a glimpse of uh, your child's ability to, to, to manage, uh, you know, all the requirements that are going to be placed on them at, at, from Stuyvesant, but also for you to also see whether or not this is the right fit. Uh, so again, we'll be looking at a body of work. We'll be laying out the criteria once we start the program so that it's clear to your student uh, and as well as to you uh, and what the commitment's going to be over the course of the duration of the program. Thank you, Principal Yu. Um... Just a little bit more on academics. Um, there were questions about summer homework. Um, as some of you may have noticed that the, there is a Delta math assignment. So Delta math is a platform that is used. And so incoming students uh, saw that at Camp Sty. There was a little QR code for them to scan. That letter is also in the incoming student portal. So uh, as of right now, that is the only summer assignment uh, for our incoming students uh, is that summer homework in the Delta Math um, platform. That's not to say that our librarians work really hard to uh, give us lots of reading suggestions. And while none are mandatory, uh, there is no shortage of fantastic books to read over the summer. And you can find them linked to our school website. The librarians have offered uh, summer reading lists. Um, go ahead, Alex. I wanted to jump in since we're talking about uh, academics. I wanted to, ju to jump to a question of AP classes. So those AP classes. So I guess the first question is uh, maybe to administration is that what if the student does not get a chance to take an AP class during their uh, freshman year? Will they be able to do it during the later year? And then I would like to sort of follow up with some questions to students and parents, how they navigated the importance of those classes for college admission and, and how they kind of manage their workload with it. It's a great question. Uh, so let me just start off and I'm sure there'll be a number of different comments here. Um, 
you know, one of the reasons why students and families want to come to Stuyvesant is because they recognize there's going to be a challenging academic uh, course load and opportunities to really explore uh, the different subject areas that they're interested in. Um, there isn't a simple answer to this because every student and every family is in a different place. Um, simply, yes, if you do not are able not able to take an AP class your freshman year, you will have opportunities throughout your sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, something to take note, freshman, sophomore year is a little bit more narrow in terms of the types of courses, because we really want to make sure you have the foundation for all your graduation requirements, your junior, senior year become a little bit more open-ended, um, which is also your two toughest years, um, just in preparation for post-secondary. Uh, what I'll say about this is around the AP. Um, every student's coming from different middle schools, every student's coming from uh, different experiences in terms of what they want and expect from high school. Uh, the four students that you see here, uh, you know, when they entered, I imagine they would tell you that they were very different when they first started to where they are now. Uh, you see four confident young adults uh, who've really learned to learn about themselves, their academic abilities, their strengths, their time management, all of those key factors that really are part of the overall educational experience or high school experience. Um, simply, when you take an AP course, remember this is a college, first year college level course. So the course load is going to be heavy. Um, it's also, you know, going from being top of class in eighth grade to then coming here and being surrounded by peers who are equally as talented, uh, maybe even more so, maybe work even harder than you. It's going to be hard not to, you know, judge yourself, uh, which is why, again, Part of this exercise is to really think about what do you want to get from your high school experience. Uh, and a lot of that is inside the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. You will have opportunities to take AP courses, um, but I want to be very you know, open here is that, uh, again, we want to make sure you're ready to take those courses uh, as well, because we want you to be successful. We want you to, to be able to earn the course credit, but also to be able to take the examination, which allows you uh, based on your score to earn college credit. Uh, those are all important factors here. And again, I think that's a conversation that we would want you know the student to have with their families, but also with our staff to help guide in making those decisions. Thank you, Principal Yu. Oh. Would any of yeah. our parents or students like to add to that? No, we've got we've no. covered it all. <laughs> oh wow, wow! We have covered it all. Okay. Um, I I have uh, seen a few times in the uh, Q and A. Maybe Miss Pedrick could help us out um, since she headed our discovery program in the past. Um, some students or some parents are asking, like, what is the program and can I sign up for it? Maybe you can give a brief overview of what we're talking about when we refer to the discovery program. Sure thing. So. To use the word again in a nutshell, uh, the Discovery Program is a program that the specialized high schools um, have as an alternative pathway to our schools. Um, every school has their program structured a little bit differently, but it's all run through the summer prior to your uh, entering in freshman year. So. If anyone's asking because their child is already in, it, it's already in Stuyvesant through the Shazat, then you're, you're all set along that pathway. Other students who have been offered an opportunity through our summer discovery program are set that way. So there's no signing up for the program. It's actually offered to our students and families. And that is through the um, uh, Office of School Enrollment. So we work with congruently with them who give us the individuals or the students who qualify for the program. Uh, and then we work with those families and those students um, throughout the summer in, in determining, again, whether we're the right fit uh, and vice versa. Thank you both. Um, and then we've already gone through a lot of um, details on discovery, but I know that there will be some more questions that go through the night. Um, I know uh, also, Mr. Schaffern, you asked a little bit about AP Bio. Um, there's some more questions about the placement test, and I'm not sure if any of our students or parents have gone through the honors math track, but um, I know that parents are worried that if they didn't do well on the placement test, uh, will they ever have a chance at honors uh, math? We know that honors math is by student recommendation, but I see uh, Sabiha with your hands up, so maybe you can speak to the um, 
to the honors track for math. Yes. Um, so basically, I'll talk a little bit more about my honors math track, basically. Um, so I took the math placement test and I was placed in normal geometry, but then I got placed in the math team. Basically, this placement test, I highly recommend as a great standard for you to introduce what math course you will fit initially, right? But that totally means you can get placed into an honors math class later on, which means, for example, for sophomore year, I was um, eligible to take honors algebra two. I decided not to, but that's totally fine. And then this year, I'm taking honors pre-calc or I just finished taking honors pre-calc. Um, so there are definitely opportunities later on line to take more challenging courses. Um, what I recommend for your freshman year is go by the placement test that's meant to assess um, your abilities. And I think the program office does a great job at placing you what your right level is. Thank you. Uh, any uh, parents with insight on that? Maybe our PA president? I can go quickly on that. Um, my son went through the, the accelerated math um, process. I think everybody is trying to end up at a BC calculus is sort of the, the high end of the, the math. And then there's the multivariate, which is very challenging. So between all that, I think, I, so I just wanted to sort of say that it's not necessarily the best to go your highest and most difficult track. And I think people need to be aware that having the a very difficult course selection versus being well-rounded and being able to accomplish your work in a very good manner and then have a balanced life may actually be a better a choice in terms of life at Stai. And so being mindful about choosing the most heavy load or most uh, difficult course selection may not be the best uh, route for you. And just keep that in mind when you are uh, try selecting your, your path. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Uh, moving on to the next question, perhaps Principal Yu, you can uh, give some guidance on this. We know that this year was the first year we had an online grading platform through Scheduler, um, but what is the grades and communication system we're moving to? Uh, maybe you can explain where we're at with that right now. Sure. Um, so right now it's undecided. Uh, we This year we were using a platform called Pupil Path. Um, this is one of the online platforms that many schools across New York City used. Um, and unfortunately, the, the organization or the company uh, had a security breach. So it's been determined that um, schools will no longer be using uh, Pupil Path for the following school year. Um, so we're impacted by this. Um, there are a few goals here in terms of determining the next platform. One is we want to make sure that it's family and student friendly, uh, but also staff friendly as well. And so, you know, I think many of our staff members have some preferences, whether it's Jupyter Grades or whether it's um, Jump Rope. There's a number of different platforms that are available. Uh, but one of the things that we have to continue to do is make sure we're working congruently with the Department of Ed, uh, particularly around um, safety and security of all student data. So again, we'll be awaiting some guidance from the Department of Ed to determine which um, companies and platforms will be allowed. Um, in addition, the Department of Education is also coming uh, up or testing their own platform. And again, we'll continue to evaluate. Um, we do want to stick with one platform. Uh, I think it's uh, you know much more streamlined, streamlined for students and for families, uh, as well as for the staff. And so we really want to make sure that we can meet the needs of everyone as best as we can. Our hope is to have the determination sometime in midsummer, uh, if not sooner. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wanted to jump in for with a question uh, back to sleep pattern of uh, STI students. Um, so that's question to Big Sips. What time do you usually go to sleep and how much homework do you have per day? I know, broad question. Uh, but you know, it would be great to get an answer from each of you. Um, personally, I make an effort to sleep before 11, but if I have an exam the next day or in two days in advance, I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure I'm ready. But normally it's 11 PM. I'm in bed. Thank you. 
Um, um, I could go. Um, the thing is, I am a morning person and I have a long commute. So I have to wake up very early, around like 5.30ish, sometimes a little bit earlier, depends. So I generally, like let's say I have a normal amount of homework, I'll sleep at midnight, but there are nights where I do, might have to go in later, might have to have a cup of coffee to keep me awake. But um, just once again, balancing out your time and making use of your weekends. Please try to sleep in, make sure to prioritize your health. This is really important. Please don't like sleep really late for three days in a night. One night is fine. Please prioritize your health. I wanna really preface that. Any other responses? I could just add on uh, yeah. um, talking about what F.A. spoke briefly about earlier, how some days or some weeks you may have five exams and some weeks you may have zero exams. So it really varies day to day based off of your extracurriculars, based off of your course load, especially if you're taking more than one AP class later down the line. But um, like some of my co-chairs already mentioned, I do try to go to bed around 1230 so I could have at least six hours. Uh, some nights, yes, it will be longer, uh, but yeah, 12.30, I try, and I aim for. Nice. All right. Thank you. Um, I think I would also just add, yeah. like, as yeah. a parent of a freshman, so I'm a little bit closer to that. You guys are a little further along in your um, high school journeys, but it, you know, freshman year is not, um, it, it doesn't feel like it's as late. Um, you know, I think my child has been able to go to bed at a reasonable hour most days and it's pretty regimented and there's kind of a nice ebb and flow to the work which I think allows um for some planning and you know so that the nights then he doesn't have a lot of homework that he can get ahead of other things that we know are due the following week that he knows they're due the following week so I would just add that um the teachers are very good at letting the kids know when you know when projects are due you know nothing's sort of sprung on them at the last minute Thank you. And uh, Ms. Pedro, question for you. So uh, what do you feel parents can do to help their students to maintain sort of healthier lifestyle and, you know, mental health balance? And I mean, what is the role? And then the same question then to uh, parents that are here. Thank you so much for posing that question, because absolutely our parents are partners in all of this. So um, even though your child is going to start getting an attitude and giving you some talk back over the next few years, they're going to be pushing the boundaries. Um, that is a very normal stage for adolescents. You did it too. You just might not remember. Um, but really, <laughs> I'm seeing some knowing laughs. Um, so parents, just please, if you can help the, the students to be able to uh, stay on a schedule, to be able to um, have a, a space where they can work, even if it means the kitchen table and the kitchen table gets cleaned off by you know, 6.30 every night and that space becomes um, their space. That was, was really nice to have that same space to go to every single time really uh, check out Talos and whatever online grading platform that we're going to use next year. That's going to be a great place for you to check attendance daily, to be able to keep up with the assignments, to very quickly know whether or not your child is behind in assignments. Your school counselor and the teachers are a great partner to you with that. Um, but whereas you're only looking at your one student, they're looking at 150 to, to 274, as I mentioned before. So if you're looking at that daily to see what your child is or is not doing, that's gonna be a great clue for you. Definitely check your child's sleep habits and uh, you know partner with them to see what it is that they can do to be able to get to sleep at a reasonable time. Um, sometimes that means that you have to be a little stringent and be able to say, hey, you know, the Wi-Fi is going to get turned off at midnight every day, or I'm going to be able to take your, your device or your phone device. Maybe I take your uh, phone at 11. Um, to help you to be able to not be exposed to the blue light and try to regulate their sleep patterns in, in that way. Um, I'll also give a plug to our, our parent association and the subgroups that are a part of it to be able to partner you yourself as a parent with those upperclassmen parents, those who have been in your shoes before, those who have experienced your long commute or our, our parents that have already been through some of the classes that you're in. I think they're gonna be a great resource for you as well as you begin your journey as a Stuyvesant parent. While we're on this topic, uh, Ms. Pedrick, a question had come in on whether or not we have any yoga or meditation available for our students. I know it's exciting for you. So <laughs> you can go ahead and tell us about it. 
Yes, so not only does our phys ed program offer a variety of outlets for your child physically, um, yoga is one of those. So we have on one end of the spectrum, you have yoga on the other end of the spectrum, you have like boxing and spin class. So we, we run the whole gamut there. And then I'm very pleased that one of our school counselors, Ms. Guthrie is actually a certified yoga and meditation teacher. And she has been offering in a very casual sense of, over the past few years, sessions for our students. And this past um, semester has been offering them twice a week in a more formal sense for students and staff to be able to drop in and get a little meditation yoga moment twice a week. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Suki, you had a comment you wanted to make. Hi, yeah, um, just talking about like the phys ed program. I have taken both sides of the spectrum, the indoor cycling class and the yoga class. And I would say that like definitely yoga, like as a junior, being able to take the class was like, so I had it first period. So it was my first class. I was able to like rest. Oh, I had it with Ava too. <laughs> yeah, we, we took yoga together. And when it came to the stretching or just like staying, laying in corpse pose, um, we definitely were able to just clear our minds before the day starts. And um, this won't be available to freshmen as of yet, but it would be available as um, you move on into your junior or senior year. Yeah. So I just want to add um, for Suki's comment, yes, it's true for the PE course is available to our upperclassmen, but the after school meditations that Ms. Guthrie runs and Ms. Pedrick spoke about, those are open to all students to take advantage of. So, um, you know, when she does those, so kids can sign up. Um, mm -hmm. This is all wonderful and we want, uh, but I know that there's still a lot of questions about the academics. A lot of questions. And um, so specifically, uh, on the AP bio and AP courses that are available um, to our freshmen, there's been a question on uh, how, it, how placement is determined. Some people have heard you need a 96. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Ms. Pedro, do you wanna answer that or should I go ahead and talk about that? I was in the midst of reading the Q&A, so I didn't okay. even hear the question. All right, so real quick, um, I, you've all been given access to our information platform on Telos. You have an account as parents and your students have an account. And so we are very much hoping, I know that more than three quarters of you have begun answering, if not finished answering uh, questions on those forms. And um, placement right now for AP Bio and AP Env Environmental Science uh, is being um, considered for those students who took the living environment um, regents in uh, eighth grade that are going to be taking it or have taken it, I guess this week. And, um, and for those students who took the earth science regents for AP environmental science. So based on availability of seats, uh, it's not, there's not a specific grade cutoff, but um, all those who are applying who fit the eligibility will be considered and uh, they'll do their best with seat availability to uh, determine which students will be placed in, in those AP classes. Um, Mr. Yu, is there anything that you would like to add? Yeah, and you know, this was from an earlier question and like, will be, there be other opportunities? Yes, there will be your junior year as well to look at AP biology. So there, there are other opportunities. Um, and I think, again, we are gonna do our very best uh, once we get all the, uh, the placement scores. And, you know, again, I know many students will be taking the living environment regions. Um, so again, best of luck on that. And then uh, we'll continue to update you based upon uh, more information as we get it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, you know, let me jump in with the technology sure. question. So I guess the first question is that do students bring their laptop laptops for classes? And in general, what are the technology phone rules at STI? Do we want to start with the students um, talking oh, yeah. about what takes place in their class, and then we'll contribute on the uh, what our policies are? I mean, I can start off. I use my iPad in my classes um, with my Apple Pencil. Yeah, uh, but not you have to talk to your teachers when it comes to using these electric electronic devices in class, um, not every teacher is going to be like willing to or would just rather use a notebook. Um, I'd say in freshman year, um, there are some times where there are projects within 
um, the classes where they would want you to bring in your electronic devices. Um, but other than that, I don't remember much from my freshman year where we really needed to bring in laptops on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's different now that I'm a junior. And also just regarding um, the overall like rules with uh, electronics, there are designated spaces where we can use our uh, devices. Um, what we cannot use are headphones. We cannot have headphones anywhere in the building. Um, for safety reasons and just being able to listen to announcements. Um, but you can actually use your device anywhere as long as you're not making a distraction. Um, and there's also uh, school Wi-Fi that you're able to uh, sign up for on Talos. Just one uh, final note. <laughs> uh, in addition, you don't have to feel pressured to uh, into bringing your laptops or your iPads into school every day because Stuyvesant offers our wonderful library with a bunch of computers for you to use during your free periods. And we also have printing stations. So if you don't have a printer at home or you just forgot to print something the day before, uh, you can go to the school and it will be right by the bridge entrance and you can use the laptops there as well. So you can bring your laptops and computers, but don't feel pressured into doing so. So I'm going to um, offer a little guidance on that. Um, so uh, we do have technology at Stuyvesant and we do our best to uh, provide technology to students who um, do not have any technology at home, or need um, qualify for it. We do have carts on uh, many of the floors in many of our departments. So when a teacher uh, is giving perhaps uh, a special lesson or an exam that needs devices, they will check out a laptop cart. So we're not asking students to bring in their laptop for that class. Uh, a teacher would go and uh, check out a laptop cart. Um, that said, we uh, would love to be, but we are not a one-to-one -one school. So we do not have, we're not Title I uh, school-wide, so we don't have, um, devices to give out to every student. Um, but we do do our best to uh, keep up with the technology needs. And Suki is uh, very accurate that you can use your laptops in designated areas and do your homework after school and everything. But as for inside of the classroom, um, only those students with you know assistive technology as part of their um, needs um, already written in their either 504 accommodations or an individualized education plan would be able to use them uh, unilaterally in a classroom. It would be at the teacher's discretion. And I do believe that um, Mr. Yu, you had something you wanted to add. And, or is that, was that in the chat from before? <laughs> that, was a, that was before. I think everyone's okay. gotten to it. Okay, great. All right. Um, anybody else have anything to add to that? If not, I'm going to jump to the question where the parents, and I know there's going to be a lot of different views on what's the out to lunch policy, because we are very special at Stuyvesant. So who wants to talk about the, uh, the out to lunch policy? No uh, one. Miss Pedrick, Miss Pedrick, tell your great joke. <laughs> I have a joke that's been honed all these years, which is <laughs> that this daily phenomenon happens at Stuyvesant, which is that we have students who leave for lunch and then they come back every single day. It's absolutely amazing. Our students want to be coming back to school. They want to be part of the, the afternoon classes. They want to be part of the afternoon activities. It's really wonderful because I worked at another school prior to Stuyvesant and that would not have been the case. If we let them out, we wouldn't see them until next Tuesday. So uh, with that being said, um, one of the reasons that we'd love to be able to have the freedom to have our students um, be able to leave, to get some fresh air, we are so fortunate to be in a really lovely neighborhood. So not only does it feel safe, but it also has beautiful views of the Hudson. There's also, in addition to the great expanses of space that we have, we also have little nooks and crannies um, around some of the inner buildings, uh, apartment buildings around us have sweet little parks and a slide if you're so inclined uh, to be able to visit that. We have the New York Public Library is like two, three blocks south from us where students can be able to, you know, utilize that tool. So in any event, we, we do let them go out, but we um, have the parents have the ability to say, nope, I would prefer my child not be able to go out for lunch 
slash a free, free period. So for instance, if they go through their day and they happen to have period six as their lunch and then period nine a free, but then they have period 10 uh, as a class, we do allow them to leave for that free period in addition to their lunch. But you, the parent, have to opt out of that. It's automatically given and you have to opt out. But, um, and then you can lose that privilege too. It's such a wonderful privilege that, um, you know, should there be a rule broken, um, a few different scenarios, and that is something that um, is a consequence at Stuyvesant. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep that privilege. Thank you. Um, I'm going to jump to a question for our students. Um, can you speak to after school clubs, whether there are weekend commitments, and then transition right into explaining with that weekend, what is SING? Because they already know about SING. So we'll make it a brief description. <laughs> Okay, so just quickly talking about the weekend stuff, and then I'll let Sabia talk about Sing because I think she really likes Sing. Um, so in the weekend, it kind of depends on what clubs you're in. Like um, the key club or volunteering committee, they will have these little organizations that go out into different communities and just do what they have to do, maybe help them out. It's just a part of the requirements that come with the club. If you're on a sports team, there. If you're on a sports team, there will be a game. Um, yeah, for the most part, like if you're in debate, there are there are going to be debate tournaments. There's just some commitments here and there, but it mainly depends on what club you're in. And then Sing. So Sing is a completely student produced show in which um, the students from each grade, so there's sophomores, just sophomores and freshmen, juniors and seniors, in which they basically, I guess you can say, compete um, in producing a whole production. So from writing the script, writing the songs, composing the songs, makeup, art, media and memory, which Ava was part of, um, like all these different crews, dance crews. So all these crews are made by the students. And during a weekend, um, I believe it's Thursday, Friday and Saturday, we get to show the entire Stuyvesant community in which alums come, parents come, staff come, all students come to support their fellow peers to see these productions. And it's an absolutely wonderful weekend. And it generally happens around like for a month and a half during the March time era. Thank you. Oh, something that is really close to my heart. My son's been uh, really part of it from day one for, for the four years. Loved it. And uh, my oldest son done the same thing. So he's, he was also quite involved. Question about the uniforms. So other uniforms, how can you get them? Um, uh, how much do they cost? I guess it's a question probably to the I think admin. This, yeah, I think this might be referring really only to our um, physical education to uniforms. Universe. Since yeah. um, this was the first um, incoming freshman class that got all the information uh, in the portal for Talos and were able to pre-order their um, gym uniforms. So if um, I'm not gonna quote the price right now because I don't remember exactly unless one of the admin do, but it is really all on that letter. And there is a website, you can go to sty.edu and it, under the athletics tab, it's the first click and uh, it will give you all of the information. And if you order the gym uniform there, your child can pick it up um, you know, at Camp Stye Part 2. We did one pick up at Camp Stye Part 1. And, and if they don't pick it up then, they can pick it up in the first week of school. Uh, but there are uniforms for uh, the physical education classes. Just as a quick note, the prices range from $10 to $20 based on uh, the quality, meaning that uh, you can get an Under Armour t-shirt or uh, sweatpants. So again, um, you have some choices here. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Thank you. Keeping Maybe jumping that. a little bit more again into extracurricular activities. And for example, if you, um, I'm not sure if any of the big sibs or students of our parents, so they are on chorus or orchestra, how much time that take versus, and does that leave time for any other extracurricular activities? Who would like to take that one? Ooh. Oh, music students do? Really? Talk about okay, it. Okay, okay, thank you. I was hoping, I was hoping. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of friends who are part of chorus or orchestra. So basically um, you do have a designated period during the school year in which 
you practice for orchestra and chorus. So whenever the concerts come around, you do have after school practices that you might have to stay in. But I promise it is definitely manageable to do a bunch of other extracurriculars that you love. Um, so please don't let that be an obstacle to joining other extracurriculars. I promise you can totally balance it. Um, yeah, I've been in band for three years and it's definitely just like within the periods thing. It's not really an outside commitment. While we're on this, are there clubs that you feel that are truly heavy commitment just to kind of that part of that clubs or clubs or activities that you're part of that, you know, you kind of just want to give heads up? It's okay. I mean, I can start off. Um, so Stuyvesant's competitive dance team named Sty Legacy. Um, S-T-U-Y-L-E-G-A-C-Y, um, award-winning dance team, and I'm the director. Um, we do have after-school practices, and um, sometimes weekend practices and competitions are also on the weekend. Just to plug that in there, if any of your students are interested in dance, um, but not only is Stai Legacy like the only part of the dance community at Stai? Because we have a quite large dance community at Stai. Um, Mr. Shafran, I know your son is really big with ballroom and Latin. Um, so I'm also going to be um, Stai Squad's president next year. And that Stai Squad is also another showcase that um, is usually held within the October to around December months. Um, and it's basically just a showcase full of dancing. There are about 11 to 13 different crews um, with different um, dance genres, whether it be Latin or hip hop or K-pop or Bollywood, so much. And it's all student run, all student um, based. And then also we just finished another <laughs> a talent show at Stai, which I'm also a board member for. And it's called SOS, which is Stuyvesant's um, outlet showcase. And that's basically just a talent show for all the students to come together. It's basically a celebration. The school year's over and we're all just sharing talent. There was acapella, there was Stuyvesant's Music Association. There was also dance performances. So just like a glimpse into the extracurriculars regarding dance, um, I have a really big hand in that <laughs> when it comes to dance at Stuyvesant. So if any of your students would love to join the dance committee at Stuy, you can let me know. Thank you, Suki. I'm going to jump in there just to let you know I put in the chat um, and Mr. Yu had uh, done earlier, styactivities.org. So we have um, over 150 different clubs, but you're going to find them all listed there with a description and who the club leaders are currently of those clubs there. And your students got their sty.edu email addresses so they can use that sty.edu email address to sign in to styactivities.org and they will be able to see uh, the breadth and the scope of the meetings that have taken place. So uh, you can get a really good picture of the commitment level as it sorts through low, medium and high commitment right there. Yeah. Um, and, and just something to take note, uh, in September when we come back uh, for school, uh, we will be holding a pubs and clubs fair, uh, usually near the mid to end of September. So you will actually get to talk to students who are leading uh, many of these activities. So you can actually ask them directly uh, what the time commitment might be. Uh, and we would encourage you to participate not only in the fair, but also uh, finding a club or activity. Uh, it's, you know, again, this is a really great way to get connected with other students. Just wanted to quickly just, uh, just uh, say that I think it would be a big mistake if you make STI experience sort of an academic hunger game. It is, that's, you should definitely avoid doing that and trying to just max out your GPA. Uh, please don't do that. There is just so much to explore, so much to experience here at STI. And don't let academics be everything to you. It just, that would be a shame. I, I would compliment that. And I would also just add that um, the kids are, you know, people ask for the time commitment for certain activities. I mean, it really is what you make of it. Um, you know, if you're really passionate about dance, you can spend hours on dance, right? And if you love uh, to play an instrument, there's so many outlets and opportunities for it. And if you want to start a club around 
something, you know, you can throw a lot of time and energy into it, but, but it's really quite amazing to see how talented these students are in these various things. And, and the sports, I mean, there was a question about, someone had a question in the chat about um, what the level of ability is to participate in the sports. The sports are pretty competitive. Um, Stye's teams do really well, um, you know, in, in the PSAL league and, and otherwise. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on the team and it depends on who shows up. And uh, so, for example, my son was able to be a walk-on onto the Ultimate Frisbee team this year because it just so happens that they lost a lot of sophomores and they had room on the team. So, you know, I wouldn't discourage anyone from trying out, but, but the teams are very competitive and quite good. So just bear that in mind. I'm just just Sorry, can I just add oh, right, one right, last right. thing? Um, you know, all of our, our panelists here, I mean, what you're hearing from them, I just want to echo something that Mr. Yu just said, um, particularly that's really important in your freshman years to get connected to the community. We are a very large community, uh, more than 3,300 students. We're a very large building, as you uh, witnessed when you took the tour. Uh, and the one, the students who've really acclimated are the ones who found that connection fairly quickly. Um, all of our parents who are on here have uh, young people who are highly engaged. And that didn't happen just senior year, that happened starting freshman year, where you're finding, you know, the places that you really want to connect with. And the four students who are here as well, I mean, they're active everywhere, uh, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom. And I would say the overall experience of Stuyvesant, at least when I talk to kids, I think it's already understood that the academics, that's not what they talk about. They talk about everything that makes Stuyvesant really unique, which is the leadership, um, the different connections that they have with one another, uh, the opportunities to really unveil their talents. So, you know, just really want to echo what Mr. Yu said and all our parents. Um, you know, this is a great panel of, of students and of families who've really encouraged that. Um, and it hasn't been a hunger game, or at least I hope it hasn't been for them uh, in respects to academics because they've really showcased what it means to, to be a, a STI student, STI student uh, which is to be well-rounded in a number of different areas. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Um, I just want to jump back to the um, PE because I know I'm not sure that any of our students had the opportunity to take a swim class or if we were remote at the time. Um, but uh, there are a lot of questions about that swim test and you know when do they find out and what happens in the class. And um, did any of our students get to participate in swim in a swim gym course? Okay, Suki, so and Sabia, hold on one second. Just wanna make the point that um, if your child did not pass the swim test, they will be scheduled for one semester of swim gym. It's only one semester to meet the requirement for the uh, STI endorsed diploma. And um, many of our students who take it, enjoy it. And maybe the two of you can give your experience with the uh, swim class. And there's one quick question that I'll answer is if you took a summer, if you take a summer swimming class, can you retest or test out? Uh, no. Um, you will take the, everyone will take the swim test and uh, there are makeup dates in the fall, but it is based on our swim test. So your swim class is fantastic, but it will not place you out of swimming unless you pass the swim test. But please give your experiences, both of you. I'll take it first, okay. Um, I actually loved swim gym because prior to that, I didn't really swim much besides like a little paddle. That's the most I knew, but I promise don't be scared. Um, the swim teachers are amazing. First of all, they generally do want you to learn how to swim and your peers will be helping you out too. There are often some um, seniors and juniors that decide to continue taking the swim as a gym course and they are already experienced in swimming and they can totally assist you while you're at the pool. I promise it's a worthwhile experience. Will your hair be a little wet after the class and you might show up to bio with a little bit of wet hair? Yes, but I promise it is a total um, worth it experience. Oh, also, um, I know if you are self-conscious of being in a class with females and males or um, anyone of any other identifying gender. There is an all, well, at least my year, I had an all-female class. So therefore I felt really comfortable in that class by having other um, people with me of the same gender and I felt comfortable. So that is totally an option. Please don't worry about that. Um, I don't really have much to add on. So we said a lot. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, my swim gym course was cut short because of COVID, but even then I still learned a lot about just gaining proper forms, being able to swim, and now I can actually swim. So um, it was a very helpful class. I'm glad it worked. 
questions. Uh, I'm going to jump with question for Ms. Pedrick. Um, have you had any bully incidents at STI and how the school handles those? Thank you, Mr. Shafran. So uh, yes, I think every school across the world has incidents of bullying um, on a, a degree of how the, the severity of it. We take these situations very seriously at Stuyvesant. We want Stuyvesant to be a place where you feel comfortable with your child going to school every day and that your child feels very comfortable and safe and able to concentrate on their academics and their social and extracurricular life without having bullying being a part of it. One of the most wonderful things about Stuyvesant is how diverse we are. And there's so many different categories of that diversity, whether it's from the different five boroughs, whether it's race, religion, socioeconomic. Um, so we celebrate those things. We are an inclusive society and we want every student to feel comfortable. So should your child experience any bullying um, these days, a lot of that takes place uh, online. It is one of our freshman seminars that we talk about social media responsibility for your child. So another item that you can do as a partner with us is to be able to monitor your child's social media usage and what they post and help to keep them aware that things that they post stay forever, even if you think they're only temporary. So uh, please continue to spread positivity throughout the social media. And if your child does feel that they experience it, even if they are just a bystander, we encourage bystanders to speak up as well. Come to their school counselor, come to me, come to Ms. Ingram, the principal or our assistant principal of safety and security, Mr. Moran, and we will investigate thoroughly. Yeah. And I think, Principal, you you had something to add. Just want to add on, and I, I mean, I think you heard it from all our parents as well, um, and you heard it from Ms. Pedrick. You know, again, I think social media has completely added a different dimension to the different types of uh, discourse that's happening, uh, whether it's happening amongst young people, whether it happens with adults. Um, I think what you're seeing across the country is um, uh, the level of discourse that we all need to, to, to be able to um, to take a moment to think about the things that we're expressing. Uh, the beauty at Stuyvesant is we have a very intellectual uh, community. And so we're not gonna always agree. Oftentimes we don't agree. Uh, the question is how we express that disagreement, how we express our understanding or openness and trying to understand. Um, our students really have been at the forefront of so many different areas uh, of just, again, whether it's identity, whether it's inclusivity. Um, again, we, you know, Stuyvesant is, is often the, um, the proxy for many of the, uh, issues that are present, whether it's equity, whether it's race, uh, and our students have been at the forefront. They've had those difficult conversations. And what I would say, you know, as a, as a point here, um, you know, one of the things that we want young people to do is constantly think about the decisions they're making. Um, and that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to bring those points up. It also takes a lot of courage uh, to listen. Uh, and particularly when you may not have been exposed at home or in any other area besides school, um, you see that uh, across Stuyvesant. We've had a lot of different uh, political conversations. We've had a lot of different racial conversations. Uh, and I know it's not easy. I've, I've experienced it. I've seen our students experience it. Um, but they're modeling to us the way that we want discourse to happen. We got to continuously do that. And again, I think the biggest piece is, um, you know, we get to see the kids when they're at school from 8 to 3.30 and after school. We don't get to see them when they're at home. Uh, and a lot of those things happen when they're you know, on a device. Uh, and then oftentimes uh, it's ways to, to be seen without being seen. And those are really important to have those conversations uh, because once it's out there, it's out there and it stays out there. So we really want to be mindful of that. And, and again, um, you know, if bullying does happen, we want to make sure we know about it so that we can address it, uh, not only with the student, but with the families as well, because it is important. Uh, we are an inclusive uh, environment. Uh, and again, uh, we really are, want to celebrate the diversity that makes Stuyvesant so unique. Thank you, Principal Yu. Um, I know that there are still uh, dozens of questions that are uh, that parents are wondering about, but fortunately, this is not the only opportunity that you're going to have to get answers to questions. Um, one, we, we did record this session. So I know if it, it was hard to keep up with, you will receive a recording. We'll try our best to also release uh, the answers to questions, but uh, please mark your calendars, uh, parents for September 1st, because that is an opportunity to have breakout sessions at school 
in homerooms with other parents and our big sibs and our school counselors who are going to answer even more questions for you on that date. And then also um, we do host an annual STI 101 for our freshman families in September. So uh, as these first few months acclimating to high school, getting into STI, it's going to be a lot of questions that come to your mind. We also um, are reachable through email. You can reach out to uh, Natalie, myself, Ms. Pedrick. Uh, we will point you in the right directions to uh, other people in the building that can answer your questions. Your students can get in touch with their big sibs. So there are uh, tremendous sources and our parent association has multiple avenues in multiple languages for support groups for our families. So uh, there's so many different ways that you can get answers to your questions. So if we did not get to your question tonight, have no fear. We have lots of opportunities to, uh, to answer those questions. And I just want to express thanks to our very ready panel um, for expressing all of their experiences at tonight and also for sharing um, their expertise about being a STI parent, a STI student, or working at STI all these yeah. years. So we're very thankful for that. And I do want to turn it over to Principal Yu for some closing yeah. remarks. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank everyone. Uh, our incoming families and students, so really excited to have you. Um, I really wanna give a big shout out uh, to our panel. Uh, we're fortunate that we have such committed students and parents. Um, a big shout out to Mr. Schaffer and Mr. Yu and, and Ms. Sue. Uh, they are our senior parents and they will be leaving us. Um, they've been having way too many Zoom meetings. Uh, they've been so active in our community. Uh, and again, a big thank you. Um, we see all of the work that they've left behind. And Ms. Metzler gets to continue to do that work and build on that. Uh, and she's been tremendously active, but the four parents that you see here, uh, this is not a one-time thing. They've been doing this uh, for quite a while. I've been so fortunate to, to be in all those Zoom meetings and then now face-to-face. -face. And, and again, their commitment um, is the example that I'm hoping uh, parents all across uh, the city can follow. Uh, their commitment has been uh, second to none. I feel very, very privileged to have uh, one worked with them, uh, but to see their leadership. Um, this is what it means to be a parent uh, who's actively engaged and who continues to support the school. Uh, the PA Association is top notch. Uh, they have more meetings than I think I maybe I have with my own administration, um, but they're that committed to trying to find improvements. So incoming families, please make sure you, you uh, join our community, join the PA, uh, because you need community as well. And, the, and our families, uh, do that not only for the school, but for one another. And uh, not only do they work hard, but they play hard. And, and really it's important, particularly after what we've experienced. Uh, additionally, I wanna give a big shout out uh, to our staff, Ms. Ingram and Ms. Pedrick. Um, we've got to prepare for another big event tomorrow. And uh, this has been a really, um, you know, the last three weeks have been tremendous in trying to make sure that we close everything out. Um, and none of this would happen without their hard work and their leadership in, in working with our entire staff. And of course, and uh, the most important, uh, our four student leaders, um, our big sib leaders. Uh, you know, I think when you see this, the, the four of them, um, I think there's a few things that I really want you to walk away with. One is just look at the diversity um, in, in the four of them. They're all very different, uh, but they share a commonality, which is that they're committed uh, to developing themselves and one another. Um, I think, you know, when I get to listen to these sessions and hear them speak, you know, again, I, I want to I just uh, preface this, you know, who they were starting their freshman year is not who they are now, uh, and then who they will, you know, continue to be in next year. Um, they've they've evolved and they continue to mature, uh, but it's amazing to see their confidence and they epitomize what we want our young people to become, uh, really thinking about the ways that they excel academically, uh, the things that they do from a, a extracurricular activity to the leadership. And again, I think this is such an important piece. Um, this is all around decision-making. And as Ms. Pedrick jokingly said, you know, our kids come back after lunch um, and that's really important. I don't take that for granted. Um, and they come to school every day. I don't take that for granted. Uh, and so if there's anything that I can encourage all our families to do, uh, yes, that, uh, that dissonance between comfort and discomfort, 
we all have to find that balance. Um, but the biggest thing is encourage your young people. They've done extraordinary work under these past two years. I don't think any of the adults in here could ever say that we experienced uh, what our young people have experienced. They've shown a resolve or resilience. Um, I cannot wait to congratulate our, our uh, class of 2022 because their last two years have been just that. Um, we're fortunate that our uh, rising seniors uh, will get in person uh, and be able to, to really close out. But again, families and incoming students, take a look. Uh, this is what Stuyvesant's about. Uh, we are excited to have you. We're excited about what you're going to contribute. Um, you've got a, we've got a high bar that's been set by this panel and many families and many students. Um, so I hope you're ready for the challenge. We're excited to have you. Have a great summer and congratulations on finishing this current school year and let's get ready to go. Thank you, Principal Yu and everyone. I'm wishing you a good night. Thank you for joining us tonight. See Thank you soon. You. Thank you.